just got back from the first real test of this new S10 build, and I have to say, it definitely had its ups and downs. I learned a lot and had plenty of opportunities to test this out in a bunch of different scenarios. I had the opportunity to do the Oregon BDR trail with my buddy Nate and the Power Stop trail team. Over the course of 10 days, I did about 650 off-road miles and about 750 on-road miles. This was basically a 1400 mile shakedown run and boy did I shake a few things loose. We had a couple of track bar bolts uh, that came loose, had to tighten those down and tighten up the hub spindle nuts. Not a big deal, but I did not expect the failure that I was going to have at the very end of this trip. If you want to see the video of this trip, go to Nate's channel, Dirt Lifestyle, or I'll leave a link in the description as well for you to check it out. What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. We got the S10 successfully back from Nevada, the end of the Oregon BDR trail. So we're going to go under the back of this truck. I'm going to show you what's broken and then we're going to talk about why it broke and how we're going to fix it and hopefully by the end of this video this thing will be back ready to hit the trail if we come under here we have no track bar holding the axle center and i have four crisscrossing uh ratchet straps holding the axle center and if we go up here on the frame where this track bar connects you can see where it's bent and then it's cracked right here all the way down and around the frame right there and you can see where this rivet went through the shock tower i left the shock tower in to kind of give it a little bit more rigidity from the top to the bottom and you can see it's ripped all the way where this uh coil mount is and you can see the whole coil tower everything the whole bottom of this frame is kinked up and that's because of this track bar mount right here. The crack on the bottom of the frame goes all the way up to the f outside of the frame right here as well. And then this spot on the outside of the frame right here was the very first area we noticed a frame crack like two days before this whole thing kind of caved in on itself. So I started to see a tiny little crack up here. We were able to weld it with a flux core welder we found on our trip so i'm not going to go into detail about all this because it's all documented in nate's video so like i said before if you haven't watched it when you're done with this video make sure you go watch it you'll see all of this happening in the video and uh how we got it off the trail and all that stuff now i'll be the first to admit that this is 100 percent preventable and is 100 percent my fault now before i even went on this bdr trip i knew that this was an issue and i really wanted to fix it and get it addressed but i just did not have time let's go over real quick what i need to change and why it failed now this is an older photo of when i was first setting up uh, the rear suspension in my truck so as you can see right here the rear track bar angle is pretty extreme there was no weight on the back of the truck the front of the truck was on jack stand so uh, this is not the final, you know, angle, but it's really able to demonstrate the issue that we're having right here. So you can see the center line of the axle I have marked right here. Relative to the center line of the track bar, we are way off. So the center line of the track bar is over in this area here. We want the center line of our track bar and the center line of our axle to be as close as possible. So you can see we are pretty far off here. So what we need to do is we need to move this track bar mount to the center over here and drop it down like about here and not have it on the outside of the frame like I have here. And then this mount right here, we're gonna move over and up to this side over like this. And then we will be able to connect and our track bar angle will be a little bit, let me reset this here, it's a little too much. Uh, the center line of our track bar and the center line of our axle are pretty much in line and that's what we're looking for here that's going to create the least amount of stress on this uh, track bar mount right here and then obviously we're going to go ahead and reinforce the frame as much as we can by adding a cross member uh, in this area and then you know as we go through this and figure it out i'm not exactly sure 
how I'm going to do it, but once we get it all taken apart, we will see what we can do. And this problem is inherent to any C-channel frame truck. Let's take, for example, Nate's uh, from Dirt Lifestyle, his Toyota Tacoma. He had a similar issue, uh, not as bad as mine, but he uh, plated where this track bar mounted and it cracked the frame. He ended up gussing it, fixing it, adding a cross member in the back when he installed the new bed and hasn't had any issues since. Now that we got everything removed back here and everything's on jack stands, you can see the box part of the frame that comes up to the edge of the cab right here. And then we have our C channel part of the frame. And then we have our wowies, our cracks, our brakes, and our bends. This cross member and then this rear bumper being bolted across kept this whole rear part of the frame square and the only issue i have is from here to here so after staring at this for quite a long time my original plan was to run a cross member that four x four cross member from here to the other side of the frame but the issue with that is is this obviously it's bent here but this goes down it's not straight and it gets wider and narrower in this spot um, and then when I finish up my rear bumper, which I'll be doing kind of next after I repair this, I'll have a cross member here, I have a cross member here, and I'll cross member here. So it'll be three cross members within like a foot and a half. I think that's kind of overkill, I think, in my opinion. We still want to have a tiny bit of flex in this frame. Obviously not enough that we're in a crack and do what we did right here. So after staring at this for quite a long time and thinking about it, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm gonna plate the area right here just where this track bar, well not this one, the new track bar mount is going to come back up and over and weld to the frame on the inside of the frame. And with our new track bar angles that we're gonna be running on this uh, new setup, it will be way less stress on the frame than it is right now. So let's start cutting it off and then see what we get into.
we have the final product of fixing the frame part of it. So the frame is welded underneath this, welded on the inside, outside, cleaned up. Now it's plated right here. And then there was another crack that I noticed right here. So I had to fix that weld right there. And then I added a plate on this bottom side because this was not flat anymore and it was i just couldn't get this where i wanted it so i plated this section right here and that is where the track bar is going to mount on the inside so this is all straightened out so inside of the frame this is a 3 plate this is where the track bar is going to mount to it's going to come up onto this side here and then down attaching to this plate down here and i should have just made a whole one big plate uh, because I ended up adding this plate right here because uh, because of this bend right here and the way this had already bent up one time I just don't want the pressure from this coil mount going up and slowly bending this section right here so I just added this little reinforcement right there I still have the shock tower all uh, riveted in from the bottom to the top so that's adding a little bit more reinforcement still and then once I finish the rear bumper, we'll have that other reinforcement across the cross member. So frame has been repaired. So now we got to build track bar mounts on the axle side and on this side. The track bar mount on the axle side is super beefy, super reinforced. I tied it into this coil mount and uh, it's going to be a real big pain to cut this thing off and move it around. I do have kind of a selection of Barnes four wheel drive uh control arm track bar mounts that i can do this is actually another one of these that i didn't use on the front so if i put this more like this you can see where the mount is there compared to up here which is going to be in line with our track bar mount over there which i will build once i get the axle side done because then i know exactly where i'm going to want to put that one Now in order to make these brackets work, we are going to have to do some serious modification to them, cutting, grinding, welding, making custom plates and tabs to try and make everything fit where it's going to be all boxed in and still be strong. With the axle side track bar bracket all wrapped up, we need to start building the frame side track bar bracket. I ended up making this out of the scrap piece that I cut off the frame and a scrap piece from the front track bar bracket. Now before we can determine where this mount is gonna go, I'm gonna put the axle at right height and we are gonna take a measurement from the axle side track bar bracket to the center of the axle and then out from the center of the axle to the frame side track bar mount using the laser to make sure that we're in the ballpark of where we want everything to be mounted. Got the track bar in. This is actually just about perfect length. It's within like an eighth of an inch of uh, where I want it. I might cut it down because it's as short as it will go. And I like to have some adjustment either way, just in case. So I might cut a little bit out of it. So I will have adjustment, but you can see our hybrid mount. The uh, track bar angle is insanely better. It's so much better. I'm super happy with it. Um, the way it turned out, the angles are super good, uh, clearances are good, everything is just so much beefier and stronger that uh, I shouldn't have to worry about this ever again. Also I decided uh, 
when I was talking to Nate, he had a great idea. Instead of building a cross member across here, another way that we can shore up this track bar mount is I'm going to take basically another one of these bars. I have a bunch of these that are varying lengths of links that I've made over the years that I've changed. And now I just have a bunch of spares. And uh, I'm gonna bolt it to right here and just run a link, like a heim joint here and mount it inside the frame over here. Think of like a Cherokee uh, steering box brace, one that bolts to the steering box and then goes across to the other side of the frame and mounts there to keep it from moving. So that's gonna be super simple and super easy. Well guys, I thought I was gonna have this thing done by the end of this video. It just is not gonna happen. I still have a bunch of stuff to do. Uh, and also I burned a hole in this shirt right here and then I got called into work. So I'm missing 10 hours of work that I thought I was going to have uh, because I had to go into work today and basically work all day. So we're going to continue this. We're gonna, going to build new shock mounts for the back of this because I'm not happy with the ones that I originally built, not strong enough. And I had to cut one off anyway, so I'm going to rebuild them stronger, much better than before, so I will never have to worry about it again. And then uh, we're going to build that brace. It goes from the track bar mount to the frame on the other side. If you guys want to follow me on social media, I am at MuddyBeards 4x4. We got a website, MuddyBeards4x4.com. We got shirts, stickers, stuff like that. Make sure you check out Nate's video on our BDR trip. It's going to be super awesome. I'm excited to watch it. And just another thing real quick. Please, if you guys would consider subscribing to my other channel, the one that I have uh, everything that's not off-road. It's called Muddy Beards Crew. I'll leave a link here or in the description. Basically, I'm building a TDI Diesel RX-7. Uh, I have the motor all built. It's ready to go right there. I got the transmission down here. I am ready to go uh, with this build. Once I'm at a stopping point with this one, that is the next thing on my list. So that's going to be it. We will see you in the next one.